We just got back from six months traveling across the country talking to people about microchurches. And I want to tell you a few stories about it. This will kick off season four on this channel as I start to just tell the stories about microchurches. Here's my sense. I want to tell you a few stories and then give a challenge. My sense is that the conversations about microchurches or house churches are so easy. Everyone is immediately enthusiastic about the concept. Not everyone, but pretty much everyone. You need to know. Believers who are involved in conventional churches, program churches, and even pastors who are leading program churches are immediately enthusiastic about the concept of boiling church down to the essentials, stripping away all the non-essentials, making it easier to simply be church, and yet without getting rid of the essentials. It's an easy conversation for everyone to have. They're immediately eager for it. In fact, probably the most common response when I tell people what we do, they say, oh, like the church did in the very beginning. Everyone gets it. That's all we're trying to do. And yet, if I say that it's immediately accessible, enthusiastic and everything, there's a barrier to entry. Most people who are enthusiastic about the concept don't take the next step and actually do it. And I believe it's because either it requires them to leave the comforts of a program church or leave the comforts of no church. And both of those are a barrier to entry into the micro church world. If church is still something that we go to and we shop for churches based on their children's program, their worship program, meaning there are their musicians good, their preaching, meaning is it inspiring or challenging? Is it motivating? And do they have extra things? You know, do we like the seats and all the stuff that most of us would grimace to talk about? But in reality, if we're going to go sit in a room, we want it to be comfortable. We want the AC to be on, things like that. We want to be able to hear. And it doesn't hurt if there's some lights and stuff. But that's comfortable. The reality is that most of us who go to program churches, we shop for the program more than for the church. But the other barrier to entry is people who have already abandoned that. And I would say you are very close to where we're at. You've abandoned program church because you found it wanting. And yet now you've found no church and you enjoy it. It's wonderful. And so to step into a micro church, to take something else on, it's not a very intriguing thought. You like your life. And yet, my heart is for those who have become disillusioned, not just with program church, but with being fellowshipless Christians, for being Christians outside of fellowship with other Christians. And so if we would read Luke 8, the parable of the soils or the parable of the sower, where Jesus tells a story about a farmer who's scattering seed. And as he goes, some of the seed falls by the wayside where the path is hard and the birds come and eat it up. Some more falls among the rocky soil, and it springs up quickly, but then it withers as soon as the sun comes out because it has no root. And still other seed falls among weeds and thorns, and it tries to grow up, but then it's choked out because these other things are taking all the nourishment. But then finally, there's some that falls in the good soil and is nourished there, and it bears fruit a hundredfold. What Jesus is talking about is when we sow the gospel, the good news of the kingdom, as he talked about it, some falls on hard hearts. It just doesn't get in and the devil comes and takes it away. This is Jesus' uh, explanation. And I would call that disbelieving. The second is when we sow the seeds of the gospel of the kingdom, as Jesus called it, some of it falls on hearts that receive it quickly, but it's a real shallow acceptance. And their, their hearts are filled with all kinds of objections and, and, and everything. And they are disillusioned. And so it, it, they might have faith right away, but then it withers as soon as any hardship comes, as Jesus explains it. For others, when we sow the seeds of the gospel of the kingdom, as Jesus talked about it, 
it falls on hearts that really does embrace it. But then as it's growing, they allow themselves to become distracted by all the cares and worries and desires lusts of this world and they allow those things to grow up and so the the gospel never bears fruit in their life it gets choked out by all these distractions and so if we have disbelieving and disillusioned and uh, distracted there's the other kind where the gospel falls on an open heart that's ready to cultivate faith and when it grows there the gospel bears fruit way more than what was planted it bears fruit in that person's life and we can call that fourth one if it's disbelieving disillusion distracted we can call the fourth one discipled or possibly if we dare disciplined disciplined so my challenge to you is are you disciplined in your faith and my encouragement is if you are whether you're in a program church or outside a program church wherever you are my challenge to you my encouragement is if you would join a little house church a micro church where you are in fellowship with other people not chasing program but simply opening up scripture together praying for each other caring for each other or sharing a meal together worshiping God together. If you would do that, that would cultivate that good soil and allow the fruit of the gospel of the kingdom, as Jesus talked about it, to bear fruit in your life. And so now you know, I've, I've spent time on this channel teaching, and now I want to spend time, I'm not saying I'll never come back to, to giving a word, but I want to spend some time giving an inside look at the micro church after six months talking to people i can say that it's an eager conversation and now what i want to do is tell some of the stories that i had and i want to normalize micro church i want to give the inside peek into what it is uh, because i really do believe god wants this to be what underlies all the rest of our church activities i had a conversation recently with a couple pastors and i asked them if the people in your churches were involved in house churches or micro churches with other people from other churches. Would that be a problem for you? The one guy said, nope, no problem at all. The other guy said, I mean, the, the other guy ultimately says, yes, it's not a problem, but he just owned it. He said, yeah, it, it does create tension for me because I think, well, I thought you were at my church. And yeah, as we tease that out, we all believe that it's better if the believers those who have accepted the gospel of the kingdom, as Jesus talked about it, that we would be better if we are intermingling, if we are in fellowship with each other, opening up scripture, eating together, and not just following one teacher's line of teaching, but allowing the apostles who wrote the scriptures to be in conversation with us, to tell us what they want us to hear. Meaning, we open up the scriptures and we read what they wrote, then we talk about it, have a conversation with them about it. Anyway, so that's where this channel is going. I'm sure I'll have some times where I need to speak to current events, but right now I'm going to do this little shift and I'm going to talk about micro churches. And so please like, comment, and subscribe. And if there's anyone in your network of friendships who is also intrigued by micro churches or house churches, please forward this to them. Please recommend this channel to them. Just subscribe and have them subscribe. Also, email me at roger at x242.net and ask to be included in the conversation. What if those of us who are intrigued by this would actually link arms together across denominational and program church platforms, not undermining, underlying everything else? I think that would be for the strengthening of God's church. As this is my desire. Press that bell icon, and then when I upload things, you will be able to hear the stories that I came back with. Okay.